go what's up good people mark holmes here and as always i want to say thank you all for watching commenting subscribing and being part of the joe boo sports report without you guys as well as game time brian it does not work and it's been you know life has been kind of crazy this off season here and we haven't had a chance to do this in a while with game time brian but we're going to just kind of do a little freestyle here and maybe talk about some of the uh uh, camp battles that we have going on some of the changes that possibly may be happening with OTAs and training camp and the Eagles do they really have anything to pound their chest about Brian how are you doing this evening buddy what's going on Mark how are you my friend um just dog days this is the dog days before training camp mm -hmm. we sit here 57 days away from training camp from, well, and we think exactly it's going to open up on the 24th. 100 so. days from the season kickoff. Yes, and 100 days uh, from the Thursday night game. Yes, indeed. So it's getting closer. Mm -hmm. I'm getting that little warm and fuzzy feeling inside, even though the haters, the doubters, oh my the gosh. question marks are out in droves, just like last year, right, Mark? They're, they're there every year. They're, they're there every year. And, you know, the doubters, the haters, and the trolls, if you want to find them, just look in the comments or a live stream on my channel because, my God, I don't know if anybody else has them as thick as I do, but some of these people are, are insane. Now, I'm not <sighs> going to say that Dak Prescott's the best quarterback in the world, but sometimes you got to look and say, okay, you, you did some good things there. You, you need to work on some other things, but people can't give any ounce of credit whatsoever. Not at all. Not at all. You would think that CeeDee Lamb is taking the snap and throwing the ball to himself. Yeah, and um, this is the you know, the season of Bash and Dak Prescott. Again, I listen, I just don't like the narrative and I, you know, like the narrative how it's a team game, people, and no, you know, stats mean nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we just look at one game in a playoff. He didn't play well. I get it. We'll Nobody see what Trey Lance well. is going to do, but Trey Lance has a lot to prove Psh. between now and the start of the season. It's mm. going to be Dak Prescott. But, you, know, you know, for good, the bad, the ugly, it's going to be Dak this year. After this year? Who you know, knows? Here's, here's what I'm going to say on this. Or out in droves, man. Here's what I'm going to say. The fact that they're basically saying it's a battle for number two. They're not even putting him in the equation to say that he has an opportunity to take Dak Prescott's spot. No, no. I okay. don't think that's the case. You know, if the Cowboys were trying not to apply year, pressure or, you know, trying to use that to help negotiate, I still believe, you know, that um, the Cowboys are looking and saying, we got our bills paid this year. Let's eat this $55 million this year and get ourselves in a better position next year on the contract. That's what I believe. I know what the haters will say is, you're just not realizing. Either you don't way, want to admit it. Dak's yeah. gone. You're just making Here's it. Here's the oh. deal. I resigned myself to the fact that I don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I have an idea. But it doesn't matter what I think. What I'm excited about, and that's all I really care about. What I, I'm excited about right now is knowing that we have – Dak Prescott is our starter, okay? God forbid, God forbid mm -hmm. there's a soft tissue, any type of injury. We have a young stud that's been in the system by the time the season starts for the better part of a year. Yeah, two guys. Yeah, Cooper Rush, too. Well, I understand, but Cooper Rush, to me, again, he's very, very limited. He, I understand everybody goes, well, he went 4-1 and one as a starter. Um our defense played and had to play at a certain level. Mm -hmm. Cooper Rush wasn't winning you a game. He had an opportunity to win in Philly, couldn't get it done when the defense played great. So, oh, but, but, you know, people will say that, you know, he did win those four games. I don't care games. what they say. Use your eyes. Trey Lance is a number two overall pick in the league who, who Kyle Shanahan, flat Bryn Powell, you know, Kyle, he couldn't obviously, you know, Mr. The quarterback guru, uh, Trey Lance came in with nothing but fundamental problems, starting with the feet, mm -hmm. okay? His rhythm, his feet were all off. Kyle Shanahan, what were you doing with this guy, okay? Every writer in San Francisco says, geez, if this guy can only stay healthy, I got news for you. He's got a higher ceiling than Brock Purdy. That being said, it's Dak's football team. 
But yeah, God forbid, though, Mark, something happens for a week or two. I feel a hell of a lot better going with a young athletic. They're going to keep three anyway. It's not like they're not keeping three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I I think it's a situation as God forbid something happens to Dak in the middle of a game, they'll bring in Cooper Rush. He'll be the number two. But if it's a long-term situation right. where he's out multiple weeks, mm-hmm. I think they'll go with uh, Trey Lance. The bottom line is, people, we're deep at that position. What do we care beyond this year? We don't know what's going to happen beyond this year. Let's focus in on this year. If they re-sign Dak Prescott to a long-term deal before the season, like we think, then Mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see what they do with Trey Lance. But until that time, we're loaded at quarterback. That's how we got to look at it, people. It's not a negative. We're loaded. Now, before we get knee-deep in in training camp and stuff, I I need to address uh, something. This is kind of like, I guess, shots being fired early. Um, But Dan Cilio, I know you're you're in that local market and you see those guys and you deal with the Eagle fans on a regular. I I don't know how you deal with it. I just don't. That's They're cray-cray. Um, you know, we all know that I was gone for 11 days up in Vermont, giving back, uh, the Philly 500 and Dan were basically saying I'm a coward and I was scared and I'm hiding and witness protection and all that. Be that as it may, the thing I find so funny is, um, how they seem to be so arrogant and like, when bad things happen to the Eagles, it's like they got blinders on and they don't see it. When I looked at going into the post-draft um, last year, post-draft power rankings, they had Kansas City as the number one ranked team. This is last right? year, correct? This is last year, you know, going gotcha. into the season. The number two team was the Eagles, and they were praising Howie. This is NFL.com, their, their early rankings. All hail Howie. The Eagles GM did it again, nabbing two highly talented defenders in the first round, Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith, before pulling the trigger on a logical, smart trade to acquire running back DeAndre Swift from the Lions on Saturday. The moves make Philadelphia better on both sides of the ball and further entrench the Eagles as the top dog in the NFC. Um, so wait a minute. Did, was Nolan Smith that good? No. Uh, I, I thought, I thought Nolan uh, Smith is hanging by a thread. Eagle, most Eagle oh. fans would be honest okay. to tell you, but you can't call him a bust. It's I'm not like saying he's a bust, but, but, no, but, but let, I'm let saying. me, let, let's nabbing two highly talented defenders in the first round. So this is another first round draft pick that you thought was going to be a first round draft pick. And a stud, and he's, you, you say he's hanging by a threat. And they were praised for that, right? How about no, the exactly. trade for DeAndre Swift? Isn't he gone already? He's gone already. So they were Kevin ranked. Kevin Byard, that was a midseason one. Now he's gone. And he's gone. So it's not like everything they do hits, right? So they were Jack considered. Leonard, he's gone. <laughs> right. So it, On and on. I get you. But they were ranked as the number two team. And they have an epic collapse. Epic. I'm sorry. You know, I know that uh, I think it was the Arizona Cardinals started at one time 4-0 and and then didn't win another game the rest of the season. Well, let me ask you something. The, what happened to what the Eagles last famous, year was just as bad. What was their biggest offseason move? This year or that year? No, this year. Barkley. Eagles. Barkley? Okay. Does he play defense? No. Okay. Well... You know, like when he can, you know, like tackle a running back or cover a running back, <coughs> their linebackers are horrendous, <coughs> Mark. Mm-hmm. Horrendous. Okay. I, yeah. I keep hearing Devin White. And a new White, defensive coordinator. Okay. I keep hearing Devin White. Okay. Listen, I'm not rooting against Devin White, but he's been a, a monumental failure since his rookie year. Yet he's going to come into Philly and rejuvenate. That's about as a big a question mark as you could have. And how come they're allowed to have those type of question marks, but the Cowboys can't have an ounce of question? We got to have lockdown pro bowlers at every position. Or, oh, my God, you're relying on rookies or you're relying on a question oh, mark. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I point out that, that we got Diggs coming back, right? But there you okay, go. I got, well, we got right, Diggs let's... coming back and we got Deron Bland, okay? Yep. Those two guys have been like the highest interceptors over the last couple of seasons. And somehow – 
the Eagles' two rookie corner, or starting corner, I, I mean, understand quarterback, that, that they're going to be better. Every time I say it, Mark, I don't understand that <laughs> logic. Big like, play what? Slay and Bradbury. Bradbury's probably Bradbury's not probably gonna gone. Be on your roster. He's not going to be on your roster. Yeah. Look at the the uh, cap number. He's probably gone, people. Then you're going to – yet, Mark, we have question marks with our left tackle and our center, which when you really look into it, the yeah, the juggernaut aside, Brock Hoffman played multiple games at center last year and right. played as well, if not better, than Tyler Biotis already. Go. We're already ahead of the game mm-hmm. there, people, regardless of the juggernaut. Okay, well, so here's, stop here's the it with thing. the questions. We all have questions. Here, here's where I think actually the Cowboys are better because a, you're in the second year of the same system. The Eagles learned last year changing two coordinators. It's not easy. We learned that in the first five six games where we, our offense was not really in sync. Yet another question mark that they're automatically going to solve. That's all I'm trying to point out to you. The question marks are mounting. Yeah, for the Eagles. Yet Dallas has question marks, and you can't overcome them. Just like last year, right? When right. you were projected to, you finished number two over. You know, you were then you you were number two as far as powerhouse teams. Well, here's, again, here's it's all things. it's good business. You crapping on the Cowboys. That's what he, it is. Here's where I think that the Cowboys, if they can take off on the offense where it was at the end of the regular season, because you could see. It blows my mind because Brandon Cooks, the first seven games, averaged 2.4 receptions a game, 23 yards, and 9.3 yards per reception. That was ass-ass. The last nine mm-hmm. games that he played, he averaged yes. 4.1. These are facts, people. 4.1 yards. Uh, I'm sorry, 4.1 catches um, per game. Oh, I have his 13.5 yards per reception. And he ended 54. up with 657 yards. No, but, but yes. I'm breaking it down, though, from the first seven games to the last nine. Yes, exactly. So the difference was the first seven games he was getting 9.1. The last nine he was getting 13.5. When you can get more than four yards more per reception, Yeah, yeah he huge. averaged 12.2 okay. yards a reception. He had, ended season. up with eight touchdowns. Right. And so if you were to project those numbers that he did the last nine games in a season, he's we, over 900 yards. We, yeah, we talked about it, that he was coming on at the end of the year. Yeah, anytime mm-hmm. I do a live stream, I get uh, laughed at and go, oh, he's uh, he's washed. He's not washed. It's not easy. 18 days? It's not. Yeah, and that was, like I said, that was, uh, you know, like Mark said, he he, he outlined it. That was coming in. um you know, as a new guy in a new offense, new quarterback, it's not easy, people. It's not easy. Uh, you know, Mark, they don't get yeah. a lot of practice time. I mean, you no. can only go out to the, uh, the Dak Ranch or you know, the Dak Yard. You know, it's tough. You need to be in there but yeah, when the bullets are flying for real. So it, he right. was catching a stride at the end of the year. I'm excited about Brandon well, Cooks. If he can, he's in a contract if, yeah, year. Like he's in a contract else. year, too, right. But if he can play just like he did towards the end of the season, along with CD, and I actually, you know, I loved Michael Gallup. I met him in Atlanta at the Super Bowl years ago and stuff, and he did work with United Way and things. But it just seemed like there was a black cloud over him, and it seemed like every time he was on the field, I wish something the bad best. was yeah. always happening. But if you look at Jalen Tolbert's numbers, because he didn't get anywhere near the yeah, opportunity, he didn't get much run at all. But you looked at his numbers; his numbers were better, much better than Michael Gallup's. And I'm not going to say that he's going to have a breakout stud season, but he doesn't necessarily have to. If he can get it to five or six hundred yards here, oh yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely will, and absolutely will. If he's healthy, he's just watch. I I love the pick when they did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't come in like I outlined many times. His from his high school to college was a no show. Was a mm-hmm. it was a red shirt year, and yeah, you know, same from college to pro it was a red shirt year. Yet last year, when he got an opportunity again, he also averaged over twelve yards a catch. Um, he didn't get a lot of run. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's Dallas's main issue. Uh, I think that's a downfall of if I had a. If I had to say one fault by the Cowboys, they don't give their young guys enough look. They mm-hmm. want to re- always rely on the veteran, like a Chuma Idoga that we saw. He's already been handed 
in name only people the left tackle job just in <laughs> that's they were never going to say Tyler you're the guy you know, in day one of OTAs I would. they rely on their friggin a veteran sometimes you got to go with a young talented rookie that's my only issue with the Cowboys really yeah um, so Jalen Tolbert's going to have a big year well but <laughs> that is if Jalen Brooks well again doesn't take that spot and really impress you know him. I love Jalen Brooks mm-hmm. you know that was a guy I I identified coming out of college that he reminds me of a young Michael Thomas. People are going to get all carried away. This is before he played one game in the NFL. And he had a couple opportunities, but training camp was through the roof and him and Dak are already clicking. So the Jalen's are our future people along with CeeDee Lamb. So, yeah, you know, uh, I'm now, happy One other thing about Brandon Cooks, I think, I, and this is what I actually like about this. C.D. Lamb is an incredible wide receiver. He's an incredible talent. He can do some things that, you know, very few people can. But I still feel like he's still a young pup. That he's not like a Michael Irvin that's ready to kind of, you know, be a leader. It seems like, and maybe I'm wrong, but Brandon Cooks is becoming kind of that that, that spokesperson, that kind of leader. You heard him pumping up Jalen Tolbert and things like that, and also, of course, talking about Dak Prescott. I think he's developing into one of those guys that I, yeah, is a leader. Yeah, you mentioned that the other day, and I kind of poo-pooed it, but I know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Anybody that comes out on the final year of the deal and they're – and they're and they're pumping up the rookie. Mm-hmm. Uh, that means he's comfortable in his own skin. He's comfortable what he knows he's going to do on the football field. I commend him for being that type of player to help out a guy like a Jalen Tolbert and a Jalen yeah. Brooks. I that is a leader in the utmost. I you asked me if I thought he could be a leader. I'm like it's tough to be a leader when you're on the final year of a deal. But after seeing how he's come out. He's mm-hmm. openly helping these guys. He's saying, "Oh my God!" Everybody sees the confidence in Jalen Tolbert, right? You know, like right now, Mark. Yeah. It's it's emitting off of him. He is like the weight of the world. He has his opportunity, and the dude is a big, fast. Just, I'm excited. We are getting really talented in the wide receiver, and it's a shame because a lot of our fans don't know. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Oh, we got to go out and get somebody." Uh, no, no, we don't. Not, not we always, don't. That's not always the case. You know, sometimes, you know, like we said, um, uh, you look at some of the moves the Eagles made. You know, Swift, they got him for a year and he's gone. Odell, who went to um, Baltimore. You know, Brandon Cooks had a better season than Odell did. You know? And Odell yeah. left dead money up there. So, Do you know what I – I want to ask you this before we get out of here, but why are they – why are some Cowboys fans – and it's not just a handful. I, I, don't, know, I, don't, I don't know what you're seeing, but oh my God, the negativity so negative. like towards Dak, but even like CeeDee Lamb saying he's not worth this. And Mike he's not as worth well. The, why is it all of a sudden – now, I mean, I've questioned a couple of these fans, these unnamed fans, that I won't dime them out. But I'm like, are you a Dallas fan? I, I don't understand why you're being so negative. What do you care with any particular play? I could see Dak why you would have a problem if you want to label all the playoff failures on him. That's not mm-hmm. fair, but I could see it. But what did, what did CeeDee Lamb ever do to anybody? What did Michael Parsons ever do to anybody? You know, as they say, the expectations are Super Bowls and nothing else. And so anything short of that, you're okay, a bum and a CD loser. CeeDee Lamb is, is... But let's see, this goes back to... This is why I hate he fantasy. He set records, people. Uh, no, but see, you got to understand that this goes back to fantasy football. Okay? Mm, maybe, the, maybe you're right. The, this goes back to people feeling like they're entitled, that everybody owes them something. And so when you look at it and say, oh, well, he's a bum-ass quarterback... Just trade him. Because, you know, we always hear trade Dak. Trade him for what? Who out there are you going to be able to trade for in the NFL? You think that the Cleveland Browns haven't tried to trade for somebody or draft somebody? Yeah. You think the commanders haven't tried to do that? It's not that freaking easy. No, it's But not. they look at this and they see other teams win, so they automatically say, well, we need that guy. We need that guy. But it doesn't always work. We just pointed out some of the moves how we made last year that he was praised for. Didn't exactly pan out the way they thought they were. And the difference, I will say, between the Eagles and the Cowboys is the Eagles almost have to go out in free agency Correct. to get players. 
Okay, and when we had Leo on on Sunday, I was having this discussion. I was saying, "Listen, you guys kept trying to get a number one wide receiver. You know, you tried to get well, Bruno well, Rhaegar, you got that, Dakota yeah. Whiteside, and all this stuff." And I said, "So you finally had to go out and get AJ Brown, as opposed to us drafting CD Lamb." CD Lamb, right? Right, exactly. So that's the difference. Okay, so you know we go out and we end up drafting a Micah Parsons. Well, then you guys got to go out and sign somebody else. In kind, because you're not necessarily drafting the next time those that impact the, players. Yeah, the next time that they draft a cornerback or a linebacker that does anything, let me know. Oh, now, I know they got two. Listen, I know you got two corners. I'm not sitting here saying they're both going to be failures. Well, one's going to be a safety. He's going to take C.J. Gardner's Johnson job after this year. But, um, you know, their history. Listen, when I give Eagles praise or Howie praise, it's not because I want Howie all – in in totality. I want him because he's willing to make a move to put a team over the top if he sees a deficiency, whereas our guy tries to put a square peg in a round mm-hmm. hole, a.k.a. Marquise Bell playing Safe linebacker. Safe linebacker. And, like, instead of going out at the deadline and getting somebody or going out and getting a Derrick Henry because we can't run it. We run the ball well, and we're getting we stuffed can, at the okay, line We scrimmage. can at least say that um, – I can't remember his name. The linebacker we brought in there, and then he went to Philadelphia and signed with them. Um, yeah, uh, Shaq Leonard. Yeah, Shaq Leonard. Yeah. So you know that was a good no sign. That was exactly. So that but that wasn't going to help us. Started this any. off about you know uh, just to just real quick. I want to touch on it before we get out of here. The only thing I'm disappointed in is the Philly 500 who didn't have your back and said no because he knew exactly what you were doing. He knew oh, where man. you were. Yeah. You were in Vermont mm-hmm. helping out. Uh, families that have been either, you know, well, you could tell the story, but yeah, basically in need of help, in need of help uh, from storm damage a year ago, right? A year yeah. ago. So you were there you know, putting your time, your blood, sweat, and tears, and you you sounded like you got the flu while you were out there. I did, and so <laughs> so it's a, it was a little frustrating that I tuned well, they're in sitting on I their fat it. ass. It's all fun and games, bro, but you know. You know, you know, like unless you, you know, are, are going to lay it on the line and go help somebody in need, shut your mouth or at least say, all right, this is well, what he's doing. It, but that's, as that, much that's, as that's I, on me. As much as I enjoy doing the show and doing YouTube and stuff, sometimes in life there's other things that are more important that you got to do. And I don't, I, I don't do something like that because I'm looking for people to praise. No, but what I'm, you, what I'm looking but you at shouldn't it get from, crapped on. Well, but here's the thing with it is. Don't say nothing if you can't say something nice. Well, I look at it like this. If I were in the same situation, I would hope for somebody to look out and say, hey, you need some help. Let me help you. You know, I'm just trying to pay it forward, so to speak, and maybe try and be a good example. But I've got the cockroaches that, oh, you're just hired. (laughs) You know, Dan Salio and Philly 500 own you. You're scared. You're a little bitch. It's like, really, people? Yeah, well, at, at I don't, some point, listen, I know they were joking, so I'm not mad. I'm not mad, but then by doing that, like you said, it opens it. You froze on me, bro. You froze. Okay, so to then go off in ways that are ridiculous, but it's yeah. put on. It's crazy. That's Absolutely. all good. You know, because uh, the, the real fans here know what we do and all that and stuff. And, <laughs> and, you know, and as they say, there's no such thing as bad publicity. So, you know, no, no, whether they're watching to like me or hate me, they're watching. So that's oh, all that counts is numbers. <laughs> um, how, what is your, I, my honest opinion is, is I, I, I don't think we got any worse. I honestly, you're, you're froze again. You're, you're froze. You got this, mm, like I'm on the toilet pooping look. <laughs> okay. Um, while I'm waiting for it to come back, my opinion is is I don't think the Cowboys are going to be any worse this season. I honestly believe that they're probably as good as they were last year. Um, we'll have to wait and see how some of the pieces go together. Um, I think they're going to have a tougher schedule, and it's going to be hard sledding starting early on having these rookies and things on here. But I believe that this team is going to be able to get themselves together. And having those last six of eight games at home could be big to get them some momentum. The big question will be is, oh, see, we lost him completely there. 
Um, the big question will be is, how will they do? Can they at least maintain 500 through the first half of the season? If they can do 500 or better, watch out, NFL, because that's going to be a battle-tested team that will definitely be able to do some damage. All right, so I lost my buddy, Game Time Brian, and um, we'll go ahead and finish this off here now, and we'll hook up with Brian a little bit later. Uh, tomorrow, I will be definitely doing the Dan Salio show from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and uh, I will be giving it back to them. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys. Peace out. Think Mark Holmes, the son of John Holmes, has ever had Stephen Jones on four times on his show? Who in the world is Mark Holmes? Will somebody please tell me? My new way, King Dick back here. And so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way. <laughs>